If you follow the desktop PC space, you'll know that when you buy a processor, depending on whether you buy AMD or Intel, the TDP may or may not be representative of what you're actually purchasing. In most cases, the power you experience is going to be much higher than the TDP. In this instance, we're equating them to be about the same thing. But did you know that when you buy a laptop, what the TDP says for the manufacturer might not always be the case. What's your minimum specification? Most website password requirements are either outdated or too complex. With NordPass, that doesn't matter, because NordPass will generate and securely store 60 character passwords. Not only that, it will also keep track of the latest data breaches in case those old forum accounts with bad passwords ever get hacked. NordPass uses a single master password with multi-factor authentication, keeping my data safe, and my passwords for everything else are practically impossible to crack. And don't forget that October is Cyber Security Awareness Month. As part of the special Cyber Month deal, you can grab the two-year NordPass premium plan with 50% off at nordpass.com slash techtechpotato, plus you get four additional months free. So for the last while or so, I've been testing this, which is the Huawei MateBook 16. 16-inch 16 device, CPU only, doesn't have a discrete GPU, which is a bit weird for a 16-inch device, but the idea is that it's lighter, has a bigger battery, it's 84 watt hours, has an impressive display, it's like 2520 by 1680, which is a bit weird, at least it's a bit better than 1080p. But inside is a Ryzen 7 5800H. This is part of AMD's Zen 3 family of Ryzen processors, and the Ryzen 7 5800H, by default, is set for a TDP of 45 watts. Now in that, AMD says that OEMs like Huawei, like Dell, like Lenovo, they can configure the TDP to any value they like within a reasonable range, sort of between 35 to 54 watts is usually considered average. So while testing this device, you know, it's it's 16 inches. It's about you know, 18 millimeters thick at its highest point. You expect it to be able to turbo to the max. Huawei even advertises it with a turbo mode. Unfortunately, this laptop peak power only measures 35 watts. In this instance, we have a detuned CPU from high into this laptop. Now, this isn't really new. We see this quite a lot. We'll see 15 watt CPU, sometimes configured to 12 watts or 9 watts. Like the 45 watt CPUs, we'll see configured to 35 watts, maybe to 65 watts in some of the high end gaming machines. But ultimately, what we're seeing here is the fact that if you see the processor, in this case, Ryzen 7 5800H, you just might assume that it's 45 watts automatically. Unfortunately, nothing on that box tells you that it's 35 watts. Now in our testing of this, we have a standard 35 watt mode, but if you plug it in with a 135 watt charger, you can activate performance mode. Now you might think, well, does performance mode go up to 45 watts? Nah. What performance mode does is it extends the turbo life. Now you might be thinking, hey, Ian, AMD doesn't really have a turbo. Well, in this case, depending on the workload, you may go down from 35 watts, 30 watts to 20 watts. And I'll show a few graphs of this occurring. If you go put into that performance mode, you'll stay at that 35 watts, kind of regardless of the workload, which is kind of nice, but you need to be plugged in and you need to make sure that performance mode is activated. And performance mode will disengage when you remove the power. Now, in terms of actual real world performance, we did a few tests on this. Ultimately, it doesn't make that much difference for most workloads, but if you're doing a CPU heavy workload and some of the instructions might actually cause the uh, CPU power to decrease, when in that high performance mode, you'll get that extra performance in exchange for the extra power, but you'll be plugged in anyway, so it's kind of here nor there. In our Agisoft test, for example, over a 20 minute test, we can see the power performance mode stays at 35 watts for the majority of the test, and over 20 minutes, it was 6% faster, which is kind of all right. But the thing is, if you saw this system and you saw Ryzen 7 5800H, would you assume it automatically ran at 45 watts? This is what I'm trying to get at with this video. You might have a nice, new, sleek-looking device. You know, it's uh, designed to be thin enough for its dimensions, but you still want the performance. And it just doesn't give the performance that you assume that it would do based on the TDP of the processor as listed by the processor manufacturer. What we really need in this instance is for the laptop manufacturers, 
like Huawei, like Lenovo, like Dell, like HP, to actually indicate on their devices what power their CPUs are actually programmed to run at. Even if that's peak, even if that's sustained, just some form of number to indicate if the processor is running as default spec, as mandated by the manufacturer, or as something a little bit different, still kind of within the specifications, but adjusted for the device. Now, I remember a story a few years ago, I was working with a relatively new laptop manufacturer and they had the same device, one with an i7, one with an i5. They weren't doing any manipulation, any configuration. And they said that the i5 was outperforming the i7 and they didn't know why. In that instance, the i7 was actually consuming more power than the batteries were able to provide. And as a result, they got a decrease in frequency resulting in better performance on the i5. Now, when Intel or AMD work with these laptop manufacturers, when they take a device, they will optimize with the manufacturer to find the best power performance profile for the device based on the cooling, based on the thermals that the device manufacturer wants to achieve. So you may have one device, say, say, say you've got two OEMs with the same device. One wants 60 degrees peak temperature, the other one wants 55 degrees peak temperature they're going to have different power profiles based on what the OEM wants. And what annoys me out of all of this is that it's all bundled into, hey, Dell XPS 13 or, hey, Huawei MateBook 16. There's just no indication of any of the under fundamental underlying optimizations that these laptop manufacturers can make, probably have made, that you don't know about. So next time you're shopping for a laptop, if it's in person, say you're going into a big brick and mortar store, ask the sales rep, so what power does this processor run at? Bet you they probably don't know. And that's why you should probably watch and read reviews of the laptop you want online. Ask yourself, what power is it really running at? For those of you wondering about the MateBook 16, uh, the review is going up on an Antec very shortly. Performance wise, you know, for a 16-inch device without discrete graphics, it does have a good CPU grunt at being at 35 watts. For me, I'm the sort of person that likes these sorts of devices, ones without discrete graphics that are designed to be workhorses on the road. What Huawei has done here is that they've tried to optimize it with Huawei Share. So if you've got a Huawei laptop, Huawei smartphone, or a Huawei tablet, or even a Huawei monitor, and I show up a picture of my setup because I actually recently bought two myself, you can screen share with any of those and use that to extend the desktop, duplicate the desktop. This device also has a HDMI port, so you can add another display that way. And the whole point is that if you buy into the ecosystem, if you get the laptop, if you get the tablet, if you get the monitor, if you get the smartphone, you can link them together, transfer files. So I can hook up my P30 Pro smartphone to this and take calls through my laptop. Huawei obviously doesn't get a lot of love in the US and regardless of your opinion of them as a company, I've owned so many of their devices. If they were in league with the Chinese government, they know me inside and out by now. But all in all, this device with the Ryzen 75800H, it's got 16 gigs of memory, which is almost adequate for a business device. 512 gigs of NVMe PCIe3 storage that's using the Samsung PM981A, which is a device that Huawei has used quite consistently over a number of devices. It's going to retail for about £1,000, which in US land is about 1150 pre tax. There are a number of other devices in this range uh, from Dell, from Lenovo. What you're going to come up against, though, is some of those will be having discrete graphics and they'll trade that off with uh, battery life but also weight and some of the other features. For example, the Huawei here doesn't have a full-size keyboard, but it does have two front-facing speakers that are quite powerful and really actually quite clear when you listen to them, whereas some other devices will go through go for the uh, full-sized keyboard but have you know little diddly speakers. The one thing I should mention, though, if you can see here, is that the webcam is here. That webcam, where if you try and use it, means you just get shots straight up the nose probably the worst thing about this laptop. So make sure you have your own webcam if you're going to go after one of these things. But aside from that, I've not really had any complaints with it. It's an interesting buy. My minimum specification here is if you are a laptop manufacturer watching this video, please, for the love of God, 
put in brackets somewhere what power you've configured that laptop to be or in the marketing materials or play it off as a unique optimization selling point for the device based on battery life, based on thermals, based on performance. You get all that extra marketing bump, but just tell us precisely what you've done, please. If you like this content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We also have now a private Discord server. And if you want access to that, become a Patreon member and it'll instantly add you as long as your emails are linked. You can join the Patreon for as little as $1.50 a month, and it all goes back into helping the channel. Thank you for your support.